Guinness. Here's her last single from the album Everybody's Angel. Here's Anita Tickerum with Only the Ones We Love. Anita Tickerum, Only the Ones We Love. Joining me now, David Sinclair of The Times. Good happy, morning. Happy Easter to you as well. Happy Easter, Barry. Now, uh, coming up next week, uh, Gloria Estefan is going to be starting a tour. Anita Tickerum has just finished hers. You saw her last Sunday. How was she? Well, it was a disappointing concert in so far as she the, the, she reminded me of the adage that there's more to a good performance than hitting the right notes, basically. Um, she's a tremendously gifted songwriter and she's got the most wonderful voice. I mean, I, it's I that think, wonderful deep voice. Oh, it's, it it's so um, expressive and it, it takes you off to some mm -hmm. distant place where, y y you know, she has a tremendous uh, natural talent. But she hasn't yet got the uh, stagecraft to put on a really good a really good show I mean, it was a strong performance in terms of getting it right and a brilliant backing so, so vocally and uh, musically right but does she just stand there and deliver N not a not lot of quite, movement no, she, no to give her due she, she, she puts a lot of effort into it mm -hmm. she does a lot of wiggling about <laughs> she looks a bit like Elvis Presley as, as <laughs> is often said you know she's now got this sort of very short quiff I mean the stylists have got mm -hmm. hold of her and she's wearing a rather mannish brown suit, um, probably very expensive. But uh, and the, uh, it was quite a surprising sort of image and quite a surprising look. And she did dash about the stage quite a lot, but she was terribly nervous. Mm. And when you get a feeling that the performer on stage is nervous, it doesn't really put the audience at ease. And the whole thing becomes a slightly uncomfortable cycle, whereby you're not quite sure who's if you're really en enjoying it because you're not sure if she's enjoying it. Did the audience enjoy it? Very laid back. Mm. The thing is, you know, if you go and see someone like uh, Suzanne Vega or Tracy Chapman or even, you know, uh, Bob Dylan, for instance, you know, people who are in that sort of singer-songwriter tradition, usually there's a kind of reverential quality to the audience's appreciation. They'll sit there and as soon as the opening bars are strummed, they go, oh, marvellous, <laughs> you know, wonderful. Mm. Hey, right on, you know. And it, that sort of thing doesn't happen with Tanita Tikram. Her audience is very laid back. They, they, they know what they're there for. They want to hear the songs played nicely and then they want to go home and you know they're not going to write a mm. thesis on the lyrics yeah, yeah i mean it, it strikes me as a typical kind of, of bed sit audience in a way people sort of sit and listen to our albums on their own and, and mope a bit <laughs> i'm not sure about that they didn't look like that to mm. me they looked rather um, more well healed they looked like the mm. bed sit audience that had moved to suburbia perhaps i uh, i mean without mm. wishing to be um now, Everybody's Angel is her third album, um, and in fact, the weakest of the three, I, I would say, that the, the songs uh, perhaps more mature, but, but not, not as striking as the first album. Certainly not as striking as the first album. I prefer it personally mm. to the second album, which I thought actually was uh, her low point. I think she's climbing back up mm -hmm. from that a, a little. Um, but, but she seems to have lost her momentum, doesn't she, at the moment? She was pitched in at the deep end to begin with. I think that first album was so successful so quickly. She was 19 and she was, num you know, in the, in the top 10. The album was number three and start selling all over Europe and everywhere. And she's now 21 and is, I think, maybe suffering a bit from having gone in so much at the deep end. It's still very away. young. It is yeah. very young. And, and I, strange enough, I was asked recently if, uh, uh, for some people that I thought would last a long time. Um, and I chose her as one person mm -hmm. simply because she's got so, so much A, raw talent, and B, she has got time on her side, unlike a lot of the pop stars that we seem to end up <laughs> discussing. So, uh, marks out of ten for Tanita Tikaram? Well, it was a poor, it was a poor show. It was, it, it was musically very good, very adept, very well played and performed, but it wasn't entertaining. So I'd have to say four, maybe five. Mm -hmm. Can do better. Can do better, yeah. probably will do better. It's probably just lack of experience. Now, someone who has been around a long time, although in this country has only really had sort of personal success in the last couple of years, is Gloria Estefan. And, and she's is marked in that, that uh, Gloria really does put on a tremendous show, doesn't she? Well, absolutely. And you could take issue actually more with the material of Gloria Estefan. Mm. You could say that Tanita Tikram is a much more original uh, r songwriter and artist, you know. But though, on the other hand, Gloria Estefan does have this tremendous Latin um, bass. You know, 